Hi, I'm Jonathan Pickup. I've taught thousands of people to use Vectorworks through my movies and through the books. I used to write the books that Vectorworks sold, the printed manuals. The other day I ran a webinar and we looked at the difference between the custom stair and the regular stair tool. On the screen at the moment I've got the regular stair tool, that's this one here. Where's the custom stair? We need to go find it and we need to install it. Now the custom stair doesn't always feature on your workspace, you need to add it. So that's what we're going to do first. Customize. I'm going to find the stair. I'm just going to go to all tools. And if I hit the letter CU, custom for custom stair, that'll jump me down here. Where's my other stair? Just here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag my custom stair, just pop it underneath my regular stair. So I've got access to both. I've now saved my workspace. It'll come back in a second and I'll have access to my other stair. This is the standard Vectorworks stair. If we go to the settings, we have the ability to make lots of changes to it. But the, remember that this stair works as a complete stair. You select the standard configuration and then you base your stair upon that standard configuration. Now this stair is great. It's got this minimum maximum values option where you can make sure that your stairs comply with the building code. We have the ability to control the geometry. We've got these lock things here, which we can then use to lock certain parts of the stair. I use them a lot, really useful because they really control my offsets and the way that I want things to happen. I tend to make this half a tread, 140 there, 140 there as well. And so that's half a tread there and half a tread there. And it just makes the handrail a little bit nicer as you go up the stair. We got much more control over the 2D graphics, the construction, and the railings, and so on. Now we can control the height of the stair by, the, by a value or by a layer elevation. And when we choose layer elevation, we can choose the story setting. So we can choose levels in our stories, or we can choose the wall layer height or the layer elevation. But you can't connect between two layers if you're not using stories. In terms of the 2D graphics here, we have a lot of choices over what we see on the stair. We can add the stair data, we can add the arrows, we can have the text, and we have a lot of control over the 2D graphics of our stair. And that's fantastic. It does give us a lot of power, but there are things that we can't do with the stair. And that the stair is thought of as a complete set, not as a kit of parts. What do I mean by that? Well, if we have a look at the other stair that I've got here, which is a custom stair, that's this one here. You'll notice that this custom stair is a little bit more complex. I've got a straight flight, then I've got a curve and a straight flight, curve going the other way, curving stairs. I can really make this stair out of as many bits as I want. And it's a lot more flexible for creating complex, really complex stairs. If we have a look at the settings, this stair works on the basis of a kit of parts. So that's one part there, then there's another part, then another part, then another part, and so on. So let's just have a look. There's this, in, so this part here is highlighted in red. We go next, it's that flight. Next, it's that flight. Next, it's that flight. Next, it's that one. Next, and so on. And once we get there, we can make changes to them. So we could make this one go counterclockwise. Go to the next one. We can change this from a straight to a curve. Now it's a little bit strange, and it's because of the outside radius that I've got here. So let's make that two and a half meters and apply that. And so you can see now I've got this serpentine stair going up. This makes it very powerful for landscaping, the ability to make your, your stair go around the trees. Very useful. Completely different to the other stair, the, the main Vectorworks stair. So the question is, which stair should you use? Well, it depends. If you're using stories, then by far this is the easiest one to use. As long as you want to have a regular sort of stair, dog leg stair, right stair, and it doesn't want to be too complex. Use this stair where you've got a very complex stair where you want to have a combination of light flights and landings and go into complex shapes. This one works really well where you've got, for example, the dog leg stair, but it does have some freedom and, and flexibility. And you'll notice that I have the ability to change the geometry, to click here, make that 
90 degrees. Make this one here 90 degrees as well. And it looks like a very regular stair in that case. But I have the flexibility of changing those angles. I don't have the same flexibility that this stair has got though. This ability to have the stair change direction. The ability to change from a flight to a landing or a landing to a flight. This stair is very flexible, but this stair suffers from putting the handrails on it, which we can now get around because of the railing tool. So it depends on what you want to do. If you're just doing a regular stair, then the, by all means use this one, particularly if you've got building code issues, because this one you can force it to follow the building code requirements. This one, it doesn't have that maximum minimum setting, so you can easily make a stair which is non-compliant. So you do have to be careful. But this is a much more flexible stair. We can make it go around trees. We can make it have multiple parts to it. One of the things I do like about this is the ability to have the stair appear on two different stories of the building or two different layers. So if we have a look at our design layer above, it's only showing part of the stair. If we look at this, the one below, now if I move this across, so let's have a look at the floor above. And you can see the stair has moved from its, from its earlier position to this one. So this makes it really cool when you're doing the upper and lower floors of a building. So to answer your question, which stair should I use? Well, it depends on the situation. Where you need a complex stair, use this one. Where you need fine control over your stair, use that one, particularly if you're using stories in your building. Hey, if you really like this movie, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. It really helps other people to find these movies. I'm not kidding about that. Become a subscriber. Every time I upload a movie, if you click on the bell icon, you'll get notified. And if you want to see more detailed movies like this, if you want to attend my workshops where we cover this information in detail with questions and answers where you get to control what information I give you, then become a member. You'll get access to all my movies. You'll get access to courses. So please become a member. Thanks for watching.